Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the NIU Dynasty here on NCAA Football 10. We are finally here for the recruiting episode where we will reveal our recruits here in season number one. Now, for first year's recruits here, I will just rename these prospects to my subscribers, so I will let you guys know when to submit those. But right now, these are just generated by the computer. And how I will recruit here in this series is that I will recruit in the pipelines here and guys that are interested in us first. So I will not go after anybody that is not interested in us except for in the state of Illinois. Everybody in the in the state of Illinois is on limits except for five stars. So watch out for that. I probably won't go after four stars early because you might be wasting your time, but I will definitely go after guys that are interested in us. Now our pipelines are right in the Midwest. We have Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin as our pipelines. And right now, I think you know how we should go about recruiting is just to add everything but mostly i think we should add a receiver you know we have a lot of receivers on our squad but nobody has really separated themselves from the pack i'm hoping that we will find that out in conference play to see who can really play at receiver because we haven't really seen anything alexander betts is a tight end and he leads our team and catches with three nobody has more than three catches through the first couple of games so that is very very alarming i definitely want to recruit heavily there and also pass rush, we are not getting any pass rush. I'm not sure we even have a <laughs> two sacks at this point. And it just seems like, you know, pass rush is one of the number one priorities going into recruiting as well. So we will do that. We will make sure that, you know, we get after those two things. I also want to recruit a quarterback of the future or quarterbacks of the future. You never know. You might need more than one. So I will go after multiple quarterbacks and see if we can bring some guys in. Hopefully we can just add to the depth of our team as well, if not anything. So what are our strengths in recruiting? Well, not really anything, to be honest. Our highest grade is C plus, and we have plenty of C pluses, but nothing in the Bs at all. The only thing that we will have to use in recruiting is probably early playing time, and that is basically going to be A for every single position because we're not a very high overall team, so a lot of these freshmen that might come in might be higher than guys on our team. So let's get into recruiting and right away, we have our first commit already revealed and that is Derek Presley, who was actually number one on my board basically because of his versatility. I like that he has B minus speed as a linebacker. I like that he can literally do everything. His coverage isn't that good, but maybe this is a guy that can rush the passer. I really love him as his play recognition is at C plus, which is actually pretty good for a two star prospect. And he chose us over Central Michigan and Boise State. So let's get to the rest of the board. And right away, our number one ranked recruit at the moment is Chris Daniels, a six foot two receiver out of Wisconsin. Now, I like him mostly because he can run routes, he can do everything, and he's got decent size at six foot two as well. So we will call him and see exactly what he's interested in. Now, in this game, you have to call all the prospects. You can either quick call or actually find out what they're interested in and actually have to have a conversation with each one. That's one thing I love about this game. So right away, we can see kind of his interest here. And one thing that we do want to pitch to him is that early playing time. It's at a B plus right now. That's our grade for him. But we don't know, you know exactly how he feels about that. So we're just finding out his pitches here. He loves campus lifestyle, which that is very high on his value list. Conference prestige is also very high and we are at a D plus and coach experience turns out to be the most. So I will actually try to pitch that, but it looks like he doesn't like that because it is the most and it's only a C plus. So we actually lose some points on that call. So we're going to hang up the phone because we have not made him happy so far. We are first on his list, so I'm not really that uh, worried about it until I see another team really come up. But the second guy is Jay Jones. He is a very good catching tight end. He can move the chains, but the thing is he does not have much speed. So I will quick call him. We will just have a 20 minute call with him. We have 10 hours to use. So we are fourth on his list and I just noticed that he is ready for a visit. So we will schedule that next week. 
Kyle Hills is the next guy. He is an outside linebacker, decent speed. I think he's uh pretty good. I think he could be more a, of a coverage linebacker, six foot five, two seventeen. Though he's got excellent size, and we really just need every position. So. I go ahead and I try and recruit him here, and it looks like uh, Western Michigan is his number one school at the moment. So we will try to, uh, you know, recruit against them. That's one thing about this game is you can recruit against other teams. But it looks like early playing time is A plus for them as well, and that is the most valued thing about him. So we cannot pitch that or downplay that. Otherwise, they will get points for that. So I decide to go ahead and uh, pitch against program tradition. It's one of his high values, D minus for them or D plus for them. And then we decide to make a pitch for NIU and early playing time is definitely one of his biggest things here. It's the most important aspect of what he's looking for in college. So we will hard sell that and keep hard selling that. And we use quite a bit of time on that. And after a while, they do start to get bored if you do stay on the same topic. So we will just end the call right there. Good call for him. That brings us to Freddie Ferguson, a decent receiver. I want to just recruit these receivers heavily. And I'm going to give him a, a pretty long call here, offer him a scholarship, and I will see what he's interested in. It looks like a lot of these, interest, a lot of these receivers are interested in that early playing time. So he gets pitched that. A pretty good call right there. Next is athlete Troy Harris. We don't really know too much about him, but getting athletes is always good because they are very versatile. So I will go ahead and give him a quick call. Next is Clarence Robinson. One thing I like about him is that B pursuit. He doesn't have the greatest of speed with C+, but he's kind of an all-around guy right now. We are in a two-way battle, it looks like. And it looks like fan base is his number one priority here. So we will try and recruit him and give him a longer call. And it looks like, you know, our fan base is at a C plus and our early playing time is obviously at an A plus. But to him, that is actually very low on his prospect value list. So that is interesting. That is the first time we have seen that so far. His proximity to home right now, we don't really know, but our grade is a B plus and we unlock it and it actually is very high. So we will actually hard sell that and then hang up the call, not spend too much time with him. Adam Taylor is next. He is more of a nose tackle. He is going to be a guy that's just going to have brute strength, not a lot of speed. Block shedding is pretty high at AB, so I will want to recruit him. Remember, we have like four senior defensive tackles right now, so we will need the future there. So Adam Taylor out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, six foot two, 268. He's a very good nose tackle right now. Can clog the middle, and I like what he can bring to the table. So we will quick call him 30 minutes and – uh, just get that over with right there then there's a six foot four receiver dustin davis he is uh looks like he is pretty good with his athleticism his catching is pretty low at c minus but i think that's something we can work with i just need somebody who can get in here right now and just i don't know we just need everything so we're just going to recruit for depth right now and we will offer him a scholarship and our call right now is at a good grade i want to get that all the way up though and let's find his pitch early for early playing time because obviously that's something that's very important to these receivers. You know, receivers, they want to play early. And it looks like he is not telling us what is his uh, value in that early playing time. So we try to actually keep trying to pitch this and hard sell it. And we can't really find out what's going on. And he actually gets bored on the call. And if you look at his face right there, he is kind of getting bored. So we do decide to hang up the phone before we ruin anything. Next is punter, and I do need to recruit punter and kicker because our kicker really isn't that good right now, but Charlie King is a decent guy. He has B uh, power, so I do want to recruit him. And then we move on to our first quarterback in Ryan Gilmore. I really like him. He's five foot 11. It's, it seems like he is pretty mobile. He can also throw for accuracy and a little bit of power. So I want to kind of get a guy that I can develop here in this program. And I will quick call him and we will see if we can move up on his board as well. Then there's Kyle Baker, six foot three receiver, great route runner, B minus route running. I really like that. He's not the fastest. He's only got B speed, but six foot three. He's got excellent size. We are fifth on his list right now. It looks like Buffalo 
is the only school to offer him a scholarship. So we will call him and make sure we get all of that in and kind of try to, you know, downplay Buffalo in a way to try to gain some points because their early playing time is a D, but he is still interested in that. And what's funny is that it, it his it is very high on his prospect value list. And for us, it's a B plus. So I will go ahead and pitch that. I think that was a very good call. Next is Jamal Wallace. We will go through about 15 or so prospects. He is a center who is decent. I do want to keep recruiting offensive linemen, even though we have good offensive linemen right now. I want to make sure that that stays that way. Then there's Steven Tremblay, who I call he is a kicker. Not as good as the punter we were just recruiting, but I still want to go ahead and get after him. I think I spent too much time on that call as it is. It's just a kicker. And then we get to our second quarterback in Daryl Long. I like him a lot. Six foot two. He's not as mobile as the previous quarterback we just uh, recruited, but I like him a lot. And looking at the rest of our board here, Matt Sanders is down here. A decent, a good speed uh, receiver. I guess it, not really a good speed, B speed, but still we want to recruit everything right now. Make sure we get the depth at every position. And even maybe some of these receivers will end up being cornerbacks. Who knows? Or cornerbacks end up being receivers. We'll see how that goes. So we decide to quick call uh, a couple of guys here, including Daryl Long here at quarterback, six foot two. I want to make sure that, you know, we recruit a couple of quarterbacks and make sure that, you know, we have that depth there for the future. We have a few senior quarterbacks behind Malik Surratt. So I just want to make sure that we have, you know, the backups and the guys that we're still developing in the system. So that's going to do it for recruiting. I wanted to introduce like the first like 15 or so recruits. It was about 16, 17 recruits. And then we will, you know, keep highlighting that as season as episodes go along. But like I said, one thing I do want to recruit heavily is receiver. I think that's our biggest weakness. I think that right now we're running the ball pretty well. Now, I will be kind of trying to switch playbooks here, maybe to get the passing game going a little bit. So I will be using I will change from NIU's playbook to Utah's playbook. They have a little more uh, shotgun. I think back in the day, NIU actually used the pistol formation, but I don't know if they have pistol playbooks in this game. I tried to look, but I couldn't really find anything. So I think that. I'll have to look some more, but until I find them, I'm going to use Utah's playbook. They have a lot of shotgun, a lot of motion, some wildcat as well. So I definitely want to, you know, get our passing game going somehow and hopefully, you know, spreading our receivers out, better route concepts, things like that will help us. On the defense side of the ball, I think our Achilles heel is really just turnovers. We have not forced any turnovers, really. And I think that that's kind of hurting us because our offense can't do it all. Our defense needs to come up with stops. So we definitely need to, you know, help our team out on the defensive end. So this episode, we will end with quick highlights of the Stanford game. And they have freshman phenom Andrew Luck. And he is a freshman this year. Toby Gerhardt did actually uh, have an amazing season. He was a Heisman finalist, but he uh, actually coming into this game, I guess, was the second running back on the depth chart. Also, they have Doug Baldwin and Richard Sherman playing receiver. So let's get to the highlights here as we will face this team on the road. We already know how tough it's been for us to win games. There is the first big completion of the game by Luck. He finds Ryan Whalen. Is now he's inside the red zone. Throw to the corner, and that's a touchdown. Andrew Luck is accurate in this game. You definitely have to send the pressure. You can't let him sit there all day. And our team has been terrible at generating pressure. It is 7-0. So here's Malik Surratt here out on offense for his first drive. Here's a screen pass out to Nardell Hairston playing running back, checking in for Brady King, and that picks up a gain of eight. We do pick up the first down now, running a little bit of option, and here is the difference in playbooks. They have these option plays, and that's a nice little six-yard gain to Brady King. Third and four handoff. Nardell does get stopped behind the line, and we will have to punt this one away. Luck back out onto the field now, throwing to the right side. That is caught by Ryan Whalen again out of the slot. And it's a first down from the shotgun now. Third and 11, quick throw. And it's Whalen again. He gets to about the four-yard line. He gets tackled. Now it's first and goal. 
Lined up here in the goal line formation. Here's a quick throw to the right side, and Luck finds his man again. It is a touchdown, and Rulin gets in 14-0 here for Stanford at home for them. So let's see if Surratt can do anything on offense, this time in the pocket. He gets swallowed up, and the right tackle gets beat. That is going to be a sack. And now that brings us to a third and long play action fake. Surratt throws off his back foot. The pressure was right there. It's caught by Oliver, but it looks like Surratt is shaken up. Fortunately, he will be okay. So here is Stanford now in a route before halftime. They go up 28-0 right before half, but we do get the ball back. Hopefully we can put some points on the board. We get it to about 30 seconds left here in this half. Here's a throw to left side, and that is caught by Nathan Palmer. Malik Surratt had some a couple of guys open. He chose the toughest guy to throw to. It's a first down. So here's Surratt throwing across the left side. It's a touchdown. Travis Hammond somehow makes that catch and gets into the end zone. We at least score before halftime, bringing it to within three scores. So second half action now. Here is Dave. This is uh, Ro Jeremy Stewart. What am I saying? Jeremy Stewart. Stewart gets into the end zone. That is a touchdown. 35 to 10 for Stanford. We knew this would be a tough game on the schedule, but it looks like Andrew Luck is doing anything he wants. But now here we are just trying to get some offensive momentum before heading into conference play next episode as Surratt throws the left side. He's got Jeremy Wynn open in the flats. It's a touchdown, and at least we've scored a couple of times in this game. This is the most touchdown passes we have thrown, two in a game, and it's now 17-35. to 35. So we fast forward into garbage time now, down by a few scores, still 38 to 17 now. And here is Surratt now, good protection, throw into left side. It's Jeremiah Wynn who's gotten going in this game. A couple of nice catches, even scored his first touchdown as well. So here is Surratt now, moving to the right side. Six seconds left, nobody's home. He's just gonna run it in. It's a touchdown and at least that creates some momentum going into next week. We actually only lose this game by two scores. It was ugly in the first half. We recover nicely to make it a 24 to 38 loss. But Andrew Luck did what he wanted to, really had the protection to throw all game long and he got the win here. But we are now 0-3. We have not won. Hopefully going into conference play, we will play teams that are closer to our level, and hopefully that will help us as we look to gain some momentum on offense as we try to run the ball in this one, which is something we've done very, very well so far in the first two games. But Brady King had less than 40 yards in this game. One big takeaway from this one is that Travis Hammond got going at receiver. Maybe he's a guy that will emerge. He had five for 85 and then on defense, we just didn't do anything. Uh, Perkle did have a sack. DJ Perkle, the senior defensive tackle. Uh, but we didn't do anything else, to be honest with you. Our defense didn't cause any turnovers. Nothing too special. And, I mean, it's expected going up against a better Stanford team. Andrew Luck went 16 of 21. Three touchdowns for him, 260 yards. He was pretty much unstoppable. I did move the quarter length to seven minutes, which actually gave us better results with stats. So I like that as well. Jeremy Stewart ran the ball 25 times for 128 yards. So we are 0-3 entering into conference play as we go up against Western Michigan. Navy will be our last non-conference game. So we'll see how we do to start conference. I'm looking forward to that matchup right after the bye week. So I hope you guys enjoyed the recruits here in this episode. And now we will start conference play. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money, I got time to get it Talking on me, so my car's a tenny Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it And I hit the 4-5 on the west side But I'm from the east side, this how we slide This how we ride, yeah, yeah, this how we ride